Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Come on, let's stand on our feet and give God a great big hand praise. Amen. Good morning to everybody today and good morning to all of you. As you bow your heads in the word of thanks unto God even today, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If you expect something to happen today, something will happen. But if you don't expect anything to happen, there is nothing going to happen. You have to have an expected spirit. I'm anticipating that God's spirit will come into this place. I've got to anticipate the presence of the Lord. I've got to anticipate that I'm going to pray for the pastors and their messages. I'm going to pray for the choir so that something will happen in here. The Bible says something's got to come from the breast to go to the breast. And so you've got to be touched yourself. What is it that you need from God? As you bow your heads very quickly, just tell God what it is you need out of this worship experience. We want to engage you today. We don't want you to be a spectator. We want you to be a participator. We want to engage you into worship. And the way we want to engage you is to sing with you. The choir will be singing with you and to pray with you and to cry with you. We want you to participate in reading the words and opening up your Bible and reading what thus said the Lord. Of course, you got to bring your Bible to read your Bible. So we want you to engage and participate. We want you to pray for the atmosphere around you right now. Three or four persons that you're sitting with, you want them to help you in promoting the spirit of God and Christ in this place. And so today we've come here to shout to praise and to give him the glory but this is the first Sunday in the new year and the way you start out your first Sunday your second Sunday the whole month of January will kind of set the pace for you for all week long and I'm hoping that you say in your heart and mind I'm going to church on Sunday morning I always ask folk at the beginning of the year make sure you come to church the first four Sundays in January and I guarantee you will set a pace for you for the rest of the year eternal God our Father we thank you for your presence your spirit your providing your sustaining your being with us all week long we thank you for taking care of our families our friends our neighborhoods our nation and even in the midst of the war torn world that we're living in we know that you are the Prince of Peace and you are on your way back to settle the score in this war-torn world, we pray for those who have come in here who are downtrodden, who are, who are having some certain kinds of things on their minds and heart. We pray that they will clear them up, that when they leave here today, they will say, I felt the presence of God. I feel the joy of my salvation. I love the Lord. He has heard my cry, and I have worshiped him in spirit and in truth be with these songsters these singers even today be with the musicians and be with all of those of us today in jesus name we pray and all the people of god said amen can you give god a great big shout out praise god come on and stand and join us in the singing today Peace. 
God, a great big hand praise as you stand on your feet. The choir said, the best is yet to come in 2023. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the best is coming. I'm believing that the best is coming. My best is coming. My best health is coming in 23. My best finances are coming in 23. My new friends, the best friends are coming in 2023. My family is growing the best kind of way. I'm going to get the best house and the best car. You ain't seen nothing yet. Come on, why I said today. Today, just turn around to your neighbor and do this to them and wave at them. Just wave at them and tell them you're glad to see them through the wave. Just look at them one more time and keep at a distance and say, neighbor, I see you at the end of 2024. And you look better than you do at the beginning of 2024. That's the way I want to look at the end of 2024. I want y'all to look at me and say, Rem looks so young. He looks so good. What has he been drinking on? Uh, at, drinking at the fountain, not of you, but the fountain of the Spirit of God. Have I got a witness in the house? When you walk in the Spirit of Christ, all of a sudden you look at your hands and your hands look new. You look at your feet and they do too. He puts running in your feet and shouting and passing in your hands have I got a witness in the house he takes away your frown and puts a smile on your face have I got a witness in the house the old folk used to say this joy that I have nobody gave it to me my job didn't give it my money didn't give it my friends didn't give it this joy that I have the world gonna preach it anyhow didn't give it great God from Zion the world with all of our problems can't take it away the president can't take my joy away whoever it might be the finances can't take my joy away whatever they may be my ugly friends can't take my joy away to have I got a witness somebody ought to say yes, yes. say yes. yes somebody ought to say yes. yes I feel good about it all right that's enough they ain't ready 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 they need some time they need some time come on quiet we're gonna praise him anyhow the Holy Ghost call said today the church say amen again amen as you bow your heads it's time to worship and to praise God some of y'all wasn't ready today God has a way of getting us ready for worship you know y'all was engaged today and y'all participated God is so good if you're here today it's the first Sunday and I thank you 
who want to should come up to the altar and talk to God. There's something about being up front. It's something about walking out of the aisles and saying, I'm going to talk to God early. You don't need to stand next to each other. You can stand at a distance. I know we're in that season. But there's something about even bringing your family, your children, your daughter, your son, and coming to the altar and say, hey, it's the first Sunday in the year, and I need a fresh start. I need things to work out for me this year. I don't care what the predictions are. I need God to do something for me. I need him to move. I need him to keep my family safe. Does anybody in the house here ever think about their family? I need God to put his arm protection around me and do like he did Job. Just put a fence around me. So that I'll know no weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. Come on, choir, sing it today. I need healing and I need to make an exodus. I need to make an exit. I need to do something different this year. Pastor Larry is going to come and lead us in prayer. Say it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Lord. Lord. Oh, Lord. Deliver me. Because all I seem to do is hurt oh, me. Oh, yeah, yeah. you deliver me even on today father with our hearts bowed and our hearts heavy we know that you can lift the burdens that we may be going through even on today father we come now we ask right now that everyone here at the altar that you will hear and answer their prayer father we ask God as we begin a new year that you would give us a new start give us a fresh spirit give us a fresh mind give us even a renewed soul Help us to know, Father, that you're there to protect, that you're there to heal, and that you're there to deliver. And so, Father, today we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the glory today. Father, there's somebody here that is sick. We pray that you would make them well. Because, Father, we know that you're the great healer. Father, there's somebody here that needs some clarity. I pray that as they leave this altar, you give them clarity, that you give them ease in knowing that you're right there with them, walking with them every step of the way. Father, we pray right now for our cities. We pray right now for our country. We pray right now, even for our world today. Even though we believe that there are some challenges that may come ahead, we know that there's a God that, that is over all things. And because you're over all things and because you've created all things, that means that ultimately everything is in your hand. And if everything is in your hand, God, we know that ultimately everything is going to be all right so we can leave this oh, all today yeah, with yeah. a sense of ease and a sense of a oh, sense of yeah. a sense of praise and worship and knowing that when we lift our voices mm -hmm. toward the hills and with cometh our help our help will come from you from oh, above yeah. father help us right now speak to us right now bless us right oh, now yeah. touch us right now heal us right now deliver even in this place we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory today. Father, as we worship you today, we ask for your deliverance even in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, all those who believe it say, amen. 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 And amen. Come on, give God some praise as the choir oh, give God sings some today. Praise. Lord, deliver me. This is my, this Tell your neighbor it's already this done. This is my
telling me that there's somebody who is trying to leave out of something. You're trying to move out of something so you can move into something. You're trying to leave an old life to move into a new life. And you want to make resolution today that you're going to do this year with God. There's some people here who need to accept Jesus Christ. It's not hard. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I need you in my heart and my life, and I want you there. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I need you to be with me. When you say that, it will lead you to a new life. The Bible says that once you accept Jesus Christ in your heart as your Savior, you are a new creation. People are going to look at you and say, there's something different about you. You're thinking different. You're acting different. You're smiling different. There's something about you. They can't figure it out. Jesus said it's this way. He said what, what it is that they can't figure out, that you've been born again. Yeah. He told yeah. Nicodemus, yeah. Nicodemus, you can change, you can shift, but you got to be born of the Spirit. And that is really what's wrong with our world today. It's the Spirit of the world. And it's not a spirit of Christ. That's what's wrong with our family. We don't have the spirit of Christ. We have the spirit of the world. That's what's wrong with our children. We, we can't get them to understand that they can be more than a conqueror, but they have to do it through Christ. The spirit of Christ. What is wrong with people today? It's very simple. They don't have the spirit of Christ in them. They, they say they do, and yet still they oppress other people, they lie on other people, they deceive other people. That is not the spirit of Christ. And so today I want to extend an invitation early there. And you're there right now and your head is bowed. I want you to put your hand on the shoulder of the person in front of you. Just put your hand on their shoulder. Nothing's going to happen. Just put your hand on their shoulder. Find the shoulder. Person next to you on the right or left of you. Put your, if it's a child there, put your hands on their shoulder right now. Your children are right next to you. Check. Children, find them here. Now I want you to just start praying for those persons that you now have your hand on their shoulder. You don't need to touch them with your hand and all of that. Just put your hand on their shoulder. And I want you to pray. If you feel a person with their hand on your shoulder, I want you to pray for them right now. Pray that God will come into their life this year. Pray that miracles will happen this year. Pray that they will see Jesus better than they ever saw Jesus before. Pray for their health, their mind, and their spirit. Pray for their ministry. The Bible says we all have this ministry of reconciliation, bringing the world back into its original order. Pray for them right now and pray that they are saved. There's somebody in here, you're confused about your salvation. And God is saying, Pastor is praying for you right now and I'm right there with you. Satan is the only one who does not want you to have the spirit of Christ inside of him. And I'm gonna ask very quickly, if you all would just stand where you are, if everybody could just stand for a moment. And if you're here today, if everyone can stand just for a moment, if you're here today and you don't have a church home, as every head is bowed, you don't have a church home, just lift your hand up in the air. Be honest with me. You've been coming to Mount Zion for a long time, or you just came this first time. But the Spirit of God, I can feel it. It's very strong in this church right at this point. God wants you to put your hands into His hand. If you're here today and you don't have a church home, 
Would you lift your hand and just be honest with me? You don't have a church home? I see some hands that are lifted. Yes, I see some hands. I see even some young hands. If you, you may put your hands down. If you've never been baptized or you need to be rebaptized, lift your hand up right now. You've never been baptized of water. That's it. Be honest, be honest, be honest. If you're here today and you just feel God is moving you to have some powerful prayer, I'm going to extend an invitation to you right now. If you're here today, you've never been baptized, you don't have a church home, you need a church home, and maybe Mount Zion is just your stay over place and maybe he'll send you somewhere else i don't know but right now i want you to step out if you lifted your hand up for any of those questions i want you to come up front real quick come on down come on down come on down that's it here comes some now give god some praise come on down come on down that's it come on down come on down come on down real quick real quick real quick that's it come on down there's some other there's some others in the house come on down that's it come on down god bless you come on down young people come on down Come on down. Don't be afraid. Come on down. Come on down. This is your, your time of exiting and moving into a new life. Come on down. Don't worry about what you're wearing. You're wearing clothes. That's all that matters. Don't worry about what you're thinking about. Come on down real quick. The only one who doesn't want you to come is Satan himself. Come on down. Come on down. There's about five more people that are out there right now. There's five more people. Come on, y'all. Y'all pray before for them. Now pray on them. Come on. There go the two. Come on down. There's three others. Come on down. Here comes two. Come on. There's three others in the house. Three others in the house. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. That's it. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Here comes two more. Come on down. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's three. Come on down. 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 This is. There it is. Come on down, sis. Come on down. There you go. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. This is your day. It's time to move on to a better life. It's time to. You can move on right now. You can do it in the name of Jesus. Don't let Satan stop you. Yeah, Don't let yeah, Satan yeah, stop yeah, you. This yeah, is your moment. Uh, this is your time. You care less Jesus. about what anybody else says. There's some of the... Yeah, yeah. Some, there you go. Come on down. 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 Come on. Let's praise them on in. Give God some praise. Let's praise them on in. Let's praise them on in. There's some other folk who are coming. Come on. 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 Come on, come on down, come on down, come on down. Don't be afraid, come on. Maybe you need a renewal. Maybe you just need a renewal. If you're that person, yes, that's it, sis. Come on down. Give God some praise for this sister that came on down. Maybe you need a renewal. You need a renewal. There's some people here need a refreshing. You need to start all over again. And this is your time to make that start. The first year, no matter what happened, no matter what happens in your life, Jesus is going to say no weapon is formed against you. It's going to prosper. It will do nothing to you while everybody else is dropping off and dropping around. You will be standing still on a firm foundation. And I see so many young people here today. Come on, give God some praise. In fact, old as I am, I see none but young folk here today. I want you to bow your heads and I want you to just say this prayer with me as you bow your head. Everybody, here comes some more. Come on, come on, come on. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Hey! There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. The Bible says angels are rejoicing right now over these who have come to Christ. Boy, I sure feel that there's a few more out there, but I don't know what you're going to do. But if I was you, I would just come on because I, I feel a strong cloud in the house. I feel a strong presence of God in the house. I don't know what y'all feel. Maybe you didn't come with nothing, but I, I tell you, I feel, I feel a very, I almost feel a little drunkenness in the place, as they say, in the spirit. Everybody bow their heads. Better yet, just lift your hands up to God. Say, everybody up front, say, Dear Jesus, thank you for saving me. I want you in my heart, my life, my situation, my family, my community, my nation, and my future. Say, God, I know you have a great future just for me. And I'm trying to find it. And so I hope that you would just lead me into the future.
successes and victories and histories and all of that. In Jesus' name, I pray. Can you give God a great big hand praise for these who have come? Amen. Ministers, come here. And I want everybody to just turn right here. Just turn to my right. We're glad to have all of y'all today. I can touch y'all hand. This is a brother. I'm praying for my brothers. Hey, little man. Just go right, that, right out that door there. Follow the ministers. Just go right out that door, and they're going to bring you right back in real quick. Ain't God good? Well, I guess I don't have to preach this morning. Amen. Get a few remarks and go home. You, you may go. You may be seated. Thank you for being here on this first Sunday. Amen. We've got a few announcements. We're going to hear that as we prepare for the offering. And we don't care who wins today, do we? Amen. Anybody care if the Browns win? Let me see your hand. Well, I'm from Cincinnati. So we got to extend some grace to the losers. Amen. All of our student ministries are dismissed at this time. Kids K through 6 can exit to the right of the stage, and all middle and high school students can exit to the left of the stage. Oh, come on, children. It's time to be excused. Amen. All children and youth. It's a new season. Amen. It's a new day. Many people have asked how you should start off the new year. First, in prayer. We are asking everyone Amen. to go into 30 days of prayer and fasting. We have a 30-day prayer guide at our Connect Desk to help you on this journey. Secondly, start with generosity. Every start of the new year, you must always remember that before you can be blessed, you must be a blessing. Before you can receive, you must give. In recognition of this biblical mandate, we as a church would like you to give toward one of our mission projects. In particular, we are giving blankets of blessings and cards of encouragement to our local nursing homes. Participate with us by bringing in a blanket and card of encouragement for our seniors in the community. Thirdly, get engaged. Join our Sunday morning men and women's Bible study between services. We have MLK Sunday on January 14th. Staff and volunteer prayer on Sunday, January 28th. Servant leader training on February 4th between services. Church baptism on January 28th. And Super Bowl Sunday on February 11th. This is a fun Sunday where we encourage you to wear your sports and favorite team apparel. We are proud of the vision of this church. While the journey of our church and our mission has begun many years ago, we are forging ahead to a glorious future, and we want to share with you our three-year statement of ministry. We sent out a special email and text to everyone on our contact list, this special ministry book so everyone can see all that we do as a church for the kingdom of God. It also is our guide to show our impact as a church. We encourage you to look through it and share the message with others of all the great ways we strive to help people, save souls through evangelism, strive to strengthen our community, and how we are a healthy investment for you. Mount Zion, on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for all that he's doing here at Mount Zion. I'm going to ask if you would stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3. 6 through 12 as we stand at the attention of God as we give to God as we bless God because God has been good to us if God's been good to you can you say amen, amen. if God's been great to you can say hallelujah amen. if you got breath in your body you got a reason to say thank you Lord for blessing me even on this Sunday morning we're going to go into our text where we talk about giving we're asking everyone to be a tither if you're a part of the church be a tither be a giver, give an offering. We know that if you're a tither, what happens? God does what? He blesses what you give. But the great thing that we know about being a tither is that everything belongs to God. So what we're doing in our context is we're giving back to God what belongs to him. But the great news is when we give back to God what belongs to him, what we have left will go further. Somebody say further further than if you had kept everything to yourselves. So as we give, the Bible's going to teach us that God's going to do some things in your life. He's going to open up 
the windows of heaven, and he'll pour you out so many blessings that you can't receive it all. I don't know about you, but could you use a blessing? Can you use a blessing in your life? Can somebody use some, some favor in your life? Well, it starts with blessing God and your obedience to his word. The Bible says this. It says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say? I have gone away from my ordinance, have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. And you say, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now in your wish, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. That's for the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Let's read 12 together. And, and all nations nation shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thankfulness, thinking unto God, thanking God for all that he's done for us. Even as we give today, we know that as we give the 10%, the tithe back to him, and we do it first before all things, and we do it willingly, as the Bible says, what happens? God will reward us with more, more of what we need, and even more of what we didn't even think we needed. God will bless us in ways seen and ways that are unseen. Thank him right now for blessings seen and for also blessings unseen. I'm going to ask if you're a tither, you can just raise your tithe in the air. Maybe you haven't been a tither and you want to try tithing. I want you to commit and just try God. Just try him. Try him one time and see what God will do in your life. I want you to raise your hand in victory that you're believing that God's going to do something special in your life. As hands are raised today, Heavenly Father, we thank you for tithers. We thank you for givers, Father. We give today not grudgingly, but we give cheerfully, knowing and believing that God loves a cheerful giver. Father, bless the giver right now in a mighty and powerful way. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. 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 I'm going to ask all of those that are given a tithe and offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets online. You can give right now and in the parking lots. The ushers are going to come and you can give at this time. Also, you can pick up your communion. Come forward and get your communion.
Let us all stand at the attention of God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own. And of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen as we remain standing for just a moment. As we open up our receptacle, even now, and if there's ushers here, we'll come and get receptacles. For those who are coming in late, they can join us in this. If you came in late or if you were next door uniting with Christ and God and the kingdom of God, you can come up and get communion even now. As you bow your heads in the word of thanks unto God, for this is the day that the Lord hath made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. I was so glad when they said unto us, we've got a place that we can go. Let us go into the house of the Lord. You can come and get communion if you have not been served. Amen. Our staff is coming now. The Bible says that on a night in which he was betrayed, in the worst moment of his life, the time to which he was turned over to the enemy, the time that he would be crucified on the cross, the time that he would sweat great drops of blood from his very body, the time when he will return back to the Father, but not without pain, suffering, and death. In the upper room, he, he took the common loaf of bread that would represent the supreme sacrifice so that there will be no more need for animal sacrifices that would cover the sins of individual but rather he will become the supreme human sacrifice the Bible says where sin abound grace did that much more and by one man sin Adam sin came into the world and by one man sacrifice that man is now saved and he took the bread he blessed it he gave it to them and said as often as you do this do it in the remembrance of me on calvary the cross let us eat together and he took the fruit of the vine he blessed it he gave it to them and said as often as you do this do it in the remembrance of the blood that i shed on calvary for the remission of all of you so that you might have a right to heaven itself to enter into the pearly gates and to be with me as I reign in heaven forever and ever. Let us all drink together. And all the people of God said, amen. Amen. Give God a great big amen as you go to your seat. And as you pray for the message, and hopefully it will be brief. <clears throat> and if not brief, it shall be long. It shall not be long. It shall be all night. Not all night. We can stay all week. As you turn your Bibles to the book of Philippians, say Philippians. Say the joy book. Philippians. <clears throat> turn to your neighbor and just say, neighbor, it's time to begin again. But there's one thing you must do in order to go into the new year rightfully. Say, neighbor, don't you want to move into 2024 in a right way? There is one thing you must do. You must begin again. Begin again. Every morning when I get up, I generally go to this one room and I look at a plaque to which I read to myself because what reading this one particular plaque reminds me of is that every day that I wake up, God has given me another chance and a new beginning. And so I want to encourage myself 
by reading this particular plaque that I will read to you today. It says, today is a new day. You can start fresh, wipe the slate clean, begin again. Say begin again. You, can, you are to embrace kindness, practice compassion, stand up for justice, talk to strangers. Ask for help. Say, ask for help. Listen with your whole heart. Offer hope. Say, hope. Say, neighbor, keep hope alive. Walk for the courageous good. Good is a courageous walk. So it says, walk for the courageous good. It says, today, love well. And to love well is to love everybody and anybody because all of us are part of the human family. And someone asked a brother, what race are you in? What race do you belong to? And his response was not the African-American race or the European race or the Puerto Rican race or the Arab race. His response was, the race that I'm in, what race am I in? I am in the human race. Then it said, lastly, be the change you wish to see in the world. Say, neighbor, be the change you wish to see in the world. Now, there's one thing you got to do in order to begin again, says Paul in the book of Philippians, the third chapter. Oh, boy, y'all look like y'all not ready to, at all now. I told you I would be long, and so you are insulted, and you're letting me know. I understand. I get your communication. It says, Paul says, there's one thing I've got to do to begin again and to move forward, even in 2024. He says, brethren, say brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing. I have to do in order to move forward. I've got to forget those things that are behind. But I must not only forget those things that are behind, I must press, reach, stretch, strain forth unto those things which are before. Realizing in verse 14, I press, say I press toward the mark. I got to reach a prize. And the prize is the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You know, the other day I remember going to a pastor's office some years ago. And before I sat down, I noticed a beautiful picture of his wife and four lovely daughters behind his desk. When I went into the office and looked at the picture, I complimented the pastor on how attractive his family looked in the photo. I then asked him how long he had been married with four children and a beautiful wife. He responded, I've been married seven months. He seemed to enjoy the bewilderment that he saw on my face, and he explained that a little over a year earlier, his wife had died of cancer, leaving him with four little girls ranging from ages seven to three. And so my first reaction was to ask him, how was his daughter doing? And he saw the bewilderment in my face. And he immediately said it without me asking, my daughters are fine. Not satisfied with the response, I went further, remarking that, that I needed to find out how was it in walking through the valley, if you will, of shadow of death, was it not the hardest journey in his entire life in losing a young wife. 
He said to me, not at all. He continued explaining, it was actually one of the most beautiful and meaningful experiences in all my life. I said to myself, what the? <laughs> Heaven is going on here. He loses his wife, and he says, it was a wonderful experience with her, and after losing her, it was actually one of the most beautiful and meaningful experiences of his entire life. And my mind and face must have appeared perplexed of it all, and I said to him, look, and the man said to me, look, my first wife and I shared the five stages together in life. And I am, much, I am a much better pastor because of it. And when he said that, it knocked me off my feet. In my mind, I said to myself, I've got to be a little protective here of his first wife who have birthed these four children and have been the husband of this pastor. And I said, I've got to be a little bit more protective and I've got to ask some more questions because this thing just doesn't sound right to me. Seven months after you have buried her and now you have another wife, seven months is just in my mind too short of a time to enter into another marriage. I have to admit, me and Mrs. Macon have riffed about this things often when folk tell us that they are remarried after seven months, eight months, or a year, all kinds of things start to run in through my mind. And the first thought I have, is not there a respectable amount of time to get through grief of a loved one? And he says to me, no. So I asked him if I could see a picture of his wife, of his deceased wife. And he started fidgeting. And he responded something to me that I shall never forget. He said to me, look, I do not want the kids to live in the past. And so I got rid of all her pictures so that they and us can live in the future. And the only thing I said to myself is, that sounds crazy. Until I thought about what my daddy told me. My daddy told me and raised me up with this philosophy. He said, watch it now, be careful, Pastor Megan. Uh oh If you are riding a dead horse, then get off. He said, he said, dismount. I, I need to tell you that whatever happened in 2023, if it was not prosperous, if it was killing you, perhaps you need to dismount. Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind, there are some things you are to leave, oh my God, in 2023. There are some thoughts you ought to let go in 2024 and leave them in 2023. There are some things you ought to let go and let alone in 2024. There are some things that you did in 2023 that you, you and I know that this can't not continue on. And I know it was a harsh story to tell, but the fact of the matter is, the man said, there's some things I've got to let go. Even after seven months of short grief. And if Mrs. Macon ever tells you when I'm gone, she only needs seven months. <laughs> you tell her, remember him. Paul says... Forgetting those things which are behind. To begin again, there's three things you have to do and then we'll go home and eat some chitlins. <laughs> the first thing you've got to do is, in order to forget, you have to reset the button in your life. 
You got to reset your life. Say reset your life. Some may remember the old Nintendo game. My sons used to be up all night trying to play Nintendo all night long. But what was interesting about uh, that game was what was called the NES system. Say NES system. It was this little button to the right of the power button. It was called the reset button. If you got stuck and couldn't get out of the game, you could reach down and hit the reset button and boom, you would be right back in the game. Some of you need to set the reset button. Now, now you might not be familiar with the Nintendo game, but, but some of us are, com are, are, are familiar with the computer. And in the computer, when you have a whole lot of stuff that you don't really need to, to leave on your front page or on your computer, you have what is called a trash can, a place that you can place that stuff into the trash. You need to know that there's some things, again, that you need to trash. Don't look at me now. I'm not one of them. <laughs> the good news is, that everybody can reboot today. You can start all over again from day one if you know how to let go of some of the stuff in your life that you need to let go. Have I got a witness in the house? The Bible talks about the new self. Behold, you are a new creation. All things have passed away and God erases your past and no longer, he says, will he remember. He will not remember your faint failures. He will not remember some things that you angered even God about. You've got to forget those things that are behind and reset your life. Somebody needs to reset their life. Is there anybody in the house who want to say yes? I'm going to reset my life in 2024. And then the second button you need to hit is the refresh button, the refresh button, uh, the refresh button, the refresh button. Uh, the Bible talks about that, and I won't give it to you. I'll let you read it on your own. It's in 2 Corinthians. Just write it down, 2 Corinthians, 2nd cha uh, 5th chapter, verses 17, 19. If you have a message Bible by Eugene Peterson, I want you to read it. Because the Bible says that you can be refreshed. And the only way you can be refreshed is to be refreshed in your spirit. And once you are refreshed in your spirit, you will be refreshed in your mind. And once you are refreshed in your mind, you are refreshed in your body. You see, the spirit determines where the body goes and what the body does. When the Bible says you need a new heart, it's not really speaking of your physical heart to get a new heart. When David said, create to me a new heart, he wasn't talking about the physical heart. He was talking about the mind because the, the mind controls the body. The spirit controls all of these kinds of things. And so you need to refresh your life. Say, refresh my life. You know, I, I, I experienced that when I got baptized. I got baptized at about five or six. Raymond and Emma was there. We were running up to the front to join the church. And when they told me that they were going to church and going to join the church and they're going to be baptized, I, I said to them, I said, well, you two are younger than I am. You're not going to beat me to the front. I'm going to outbeat you. And so these three little black kids ran from the back of the church all the way to the front. And I happened not to have won, but I did give my life to Christ. Say amen, somebody. He did win. And so we got baptized. Do you remember the day you got baptized? I remember when I got baptized. I got baptized in a big uh, block uh, uh, a pool in the basement. The difference is it was not a modern pool. It was an old-fashioned pool. And in this particular pool, we didn't have any warm water or nothing to heat up the pew, uh, pool. And so when I got baptized, I got baptized in cold water. Now, I got baptized first, and then uh, Raymond got baptized, but when it got down to Emma, Emma touched that water. He said, oh, no. He, and he started crying, yelling and screaming, waving his hand, and the pa pastor B.W. Smith said, hey, get this kid out of this baptismal pool. He's not ready for this cold water. Well, I wasn't ready for it either, but I got down there and got into that cold water, shivered and everything else, and got up, and the preacher said, in essence, said, said Larry, you're now a new life. Welcome to your new journey in life, and net welcome to your new life. You're now refreshed, and I, I got up out of that pool, got the towel around me, and said, he don't understand what he really said. I did get refreshed, all right. I was in that cold water. Let me tell you something. When you get into the spirit of God, you get refreshed. 
God changes you from the inside to the outside. God renews your spirit. The Bible says in Isaiah, you shall mount up with wings as an eagle and run and not grow weary. You shall walk and not faint. What is that? That is about refreshing. When God says you are a new creation, all things have passed away. You are refreshed. And I need to tell you there's somebody in the house need to be refreshed and you need a restart. But in order to be refreshed and have a restart, you've got to be renewed. Every now and then, you've got to renew what your motive for being a Christian is all about. You've got to renew what your commitment is all about. You've got to renew the direction that you're going into your life. You've got to renew your ministry. I just told you that you don't know what your ministry is. Just remember what God says. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. And, and that means that I've got to renew my mission. I've got to learn how to reconcile because God says that he is reconciling the world unto himself. And I have this ministry, say ministry again, of reconciliation. I've got to bring my family back into order. I've got to bring my community back in order. I've got to bring myself back into order. I've got to, make, I've got to bring my goals in, back into order. I've got to make my destiny my, I renew. Say renew. Say renew. He says, forgetting those things which are behind. What are you going to forget? I'm going to forget about my past sins. Say past sins. Stand on your feet. Say past sins. I'm going to re I'm going to I'm going to forget my past failures. Say past failures. Here's the resolution you ought to make. I'm going to re I'm going to forget what I did on yesterday and what I'm going to do uh, and focus on what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm going to forget my failures. I'm going to forget my successes. I'm going to forget my sinful pleasures. I'm going to forget my past. I'm going to forget my unhappy moments. I'm going to forget my blessings. I'm going to tell all of those things. Adios. It's a new year. Serenata. I'm gone. Goodbye. I'm leaving out of this whole life. I'm going to start new. I told you already. I'm going to look at my hands. My hands are going to start slowly looking newer. I'm going to look at my feet and they are going to slowly look new. I'm going to look at my life and see that something has changed on the inside. When you have something on the inside, it exhibits itself on the outside. This little light of mine that's on the inside, I'm going to let it shine. Anybody in the house going to let their light shine? Where are you going to let it shine, Larry? I'm going to let it shine everywhere I go. When I go into the neighborhood, the hood I call it, I'm going to let my light shine. When I go on the job, I'm going to let my light shine. No matter how mean they are to me, this little light, I'm going to just let it shine. Somebody said, Larry, are you going to let it shine? Yes. I'm going to make it shine. How are we going to make it shine? I'm not going to make it shine. I'm just going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's through. As you bow your heads, restart, refresh, renew your life. That's all God wants you to do in 2024. Refresh. Just whisper, refresh, restart, and renew my commitment to God. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this moment, for allowing us to be in this church. We thank you for reminding that every day your mercies are new each morning. Morning by morning, new mercies they come. God, we pray that you will be with us in 2024. Whatever the challenges are, help us to get in front of the challenges, whether they're health issues, whether they're relationship issue, whether they're financial issue, whether they're social issues, whether they are political issues. Help us, God, with your help to manage our challenges and to manage the consequences of a world that seemed to be leaving you on a day-by-day -day basis. Remind us that victory and conquering starts with us as an individual. And from there, you will move us to where we need to go collectively. Bless our families. Bless our lives. Above all, God bless your church. Thank you for so many people coming back to church to let the world know that church is not outdated. 
because God is always up to date. So bless us now as we go in our own way. And God, as we go through this week, in our new and renewed commitments to you, may they show themselves in a light up church with people who are lit up from the inside out. Help us to continue our vision for 2024. And thank you, God, for the booklets and all the things that we are trying to do here in this ministry. We even thank you, God, for naming the street after your servant. But God, we're going to forget about that. We're going to name this the highway of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give God a great big hand praise. Turn to your neighbor and give them a great big high, wide smile and tell them God loves you and so do we. Amen.